Hello out there. Um, this is a video I decided to make to perhaps help someone understand maybe a basic principle of how you start a lawnmower type engine that doesn't want to start. However, I'm taking a different tact. In this case, I've got a portable generator here that develops uh, 110 volts. Um, I believe the wattage is pretty low. It's about 4,000 if I remember right. I bought this thing, oh, 15 years ago to use as a backup um, for power outages. Um, and I've had to use it several times. Um, principally, I'm more concerned about winter outages because of the heating system I have and some other things that uh, could potentially freeze up and I couldn't w wouldn't want that anyway I don't even really need to describe who made this generator or whatever uh, the principle here is um, much like a story I could tell you about uh, some friends that had an outboard motor um, and uh, and this happened a long time ago but uh, they were busy trying to start their outboard motor and told me that, uh, and I knew of it, that uh, the transom of their boat had broken off because of corroded uh, or rotted wood and the motor went into the water. They were able to retrieve the motor by using the cables that were fastened to it, uh, you know, the accelerator cable and things like that, uh, pull the motor back into the boat. However, it had been submerged for at least a minute Anyhow, what happened is uh, when I approached them and they couldn't start it, I said, well, one of my guesses would be that the magneto generating plate, which in this case for this generator is right in here, uh, probably has a fine coat of rust on it. And if it has a rust coat on it, it will not develop the voltage through the coil, which is sitting right there, to power the spark plug. In other words, you'll have plenty of fuel and all that, but you won't have any spark. And uh, the unit's going to be real balky to start if it starts at all. Well, in my case, this unit got progressively harder to start over the time period I've owned it. And uh, these things take a lot of effort to pull a cord, which is uh, actually the outer part of this chamber we're looking at here. Um, it just really unbolts from this and... It's a self-contained unit, which is nice. You don't have to worry about um, um, how you put it back on. As long as you just put it on with the right feel to it, it'll go right back on there. That's number one. You have to remove this cover. Well, anyhow, after we polished the, uh, the plate with some very fine sandpaper, in this case, I'm going to use 400. And I'm talking about this surface right in here and uh, primarily this spot um, this thing will probably start very nicely um, what it is is if you see well there as you pull the cord to start these things this thing rotates and as it rotates it drives a current into this magneto um, voltage coil here which generates a spark through this wire which is why the spark plug gets power so it's a self-generating unit for that reason, which everything like this is, except that with a coat of rust on here, uh, it's not going to do well. So having done that, I think probably I'll get this thing started real easily. So this is just a word to those of you who feel something is broke or wrong. This possibly could be the reason if you store the unit in a place where this type of thing can happen. It really doesn't matter over time. It's probably going to do it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and polish this up simply by using my hand to do that. And I'm going to bet that after I shine this up somewhat, this unit will start real easy. We'll see. Okay. I put this cover, the cranking cord cover back on this unit. It's really just held on here by four screws and those are located right there. One is over here and there's two at the bottom. 
One is tucked in way down under there. If you can see that, it's really just straightforward removing those and taking this cover off. That's how I reached or accessed the, what you call the disc, I guess, to polish that edge. And I have done that. I have done nothing else with this unit other than put a small amount of gas in here. Um, I've always been careful to use stable, which is um, an additive for the gas, which helps prevent it from breaking down as much for storage periods. The oil in the unit is also not fresh, but um, it runs and I haven't used it much, so I'm just going to continue to uh, um, move on here and try to start this and we'll see how well it runs. Anyway, so I've got the cover back on. That's what you need to remove to access the rotating uh, magnet uh, magno wheel, whatever you want to call it, that generates the current for the um, powering of this unit through a, a coil. So that this, uh, this unit has started yeah I got to open the garage door here I made just a couple of attempts set the choke right and this generator fired right up just like it would have when I got it so I'm very pleased with what I did. It's just a tip for you YouTube viewers that when you're working with an old piece of equipment that uh, runs on this type of setup, you're going to have some corrosion, light rusting. That's normal. And if you don't remove that, you probably won't get a spark to start this gasoline-powered engine. So now I'm changing the oil on this generator. There's actually two fill ports. One is here and the other is on the opposite side. Um, focus in on it here. That's the opening right there. Um, in order to drain this unit it needs to be tilted over which I have already done. The oil I had not changed the oil in a significant amount of time. I wouldn't want to admit how long it's been. It was clearly broken down um, just by appearance. And I'm going to go ahead and put 30 weight oil in here now. Uh, to fill it, you almost have to have a slight tilt to it to get about 20 ounces plus in here. And uh, I'm going to proceed to do that. So that would be important to try to keep the equipment in good condition. To have uh, decent oil to run this uh, this engine. So um, anyhow, the, the unit runs fine. Um, it hasn't had much of a service life, but when I've needed to use it, that's when it's important. So hopefully it'll last a long time uh, from this point forward, because I'm sure we'll need it again. Incidentally, this was about a 2,400 watt unit. As far as electrical power goes, the Briggs & Stratton engine is a 5 horsepower. It takes some effort to start it, but I could tell this time that I got a small amount of life out of it when I attempted to start it. So I know that by polishing that um, Magno wheel, that's what I call it, uh, made a huge difference.